in this session we are going to discuss normal probability distribution i sincerely believe you all have already viewed normal distribution part 1 we shall continue now this is the curve we discussed in normal distribution part 1 when we standardize the normal distribution we get normal probability distribution look z values are represented just below the x values along the x axis what are z values standardized the x values are called z values when we view the curve with reference to z values normal distribution becomes normal probability distribution normal probability curve is one whose mean is zero standard deviation one and the area under the curve shows the total probability which is equal to one we shall take the typical normal distribution which we used in normal distribution part 1 mean lies exactly at the middle and also at the peak i have shown only a few values of x required for our analysis 120 lies one standard deviation distance to the right of mean 140 lies two standard deviation distance to the right of mean 160 lies three standard deviation distance to the right of mean 80 lies one standard deviation distance to the left of mean 60 lies two standard deviation distance to the left of mean 40 lies three standard deviation distance to the left of mean the area under the curve represents total frequency as our analysis is going to be in terms of percentage we need not bother about the actual total frequency of the distribution and also about the actual class intervals to make a normal probability distribution we have to standardize the values of x standardized x values are called z values the formula used to convert x values into z values is this z stands for standardized x values x stands for the value of the variable x x bar stands for mean value of the distribution sigma stands for the standard deviation of the distribution now we shall convert the x values and show the z values just below the x values first we shall start with the mean at x equal to 100 z equal to 0 at x equal to 120 z equal to 
at x equal to 140, z equal to 2. At x equal to 160, z equal to 3. At x equal to 80, z equal to minus 1. At x equal to 60, z equal to minus 2. At x equal to 40, z equal to minus 3. Read the curve with reference to x values. The curve is called a normal curve. The area under the curve shows total frequency. Read the curve with reference to z values. The curve is called standard normal curve. It is also called normal probability curve because the area under the curve shows the total probability and that is equal to 1. And remember the area, mean and standard deviation relation of the normal curve. 68.26% of the frequencies fall one standard deviation distance on either side of mean. 95.44% of the frequencies fall two standard deviation distance on either side of mean. 99.74% of the frequencies fall three standard deviation distance on either side of mean. Apply the same relation to the probability distribution. For analytical convenience, I shall show the x values also. The total area under the curve is equal to the total probability. The mean of the probability distribution is zero. The value of z that lie one standard deviation distance on either side of mean is 1 and minus 1. The area represents the probability 0.6826. Its interpretation is that probability of x taking a value in the range 80, 120 is 0.6826. The values of z that lie two standard deviation distance on either side of mean is 2 and minus 2. This area represents the probability 0.9544. Its interpretation is that probability of x taking a value in the range 60, 140 is 0.9544. The values of z that lie three standard deviation distance on either side of mean is 3 and minus 3. This area represents the probability 0.9974. Its interpretation is that probability of x taking a value in the range 40, 160 is 0.9974. Now, we shall work on finding the probability of different range of values of x. What is the probability x takes a value greater than 100?
probability of the total area is 1. Half the area represents 0.5 probability. Hence, the probability of x taking a value greater than 100 is 0.5. What is the probability x takes a value in the range 100, 120? We know the probability value between minus 1 and 1. It is 0.6826. The probability value between 0 and 1 must be half of 0.6826. Hence, the probability of x taking a value in the range 100, 120 is 0.3413. What is the probability x takes a value in the range 100, 140? We know the probability value between minus 2 and 2. It is 0.9544. The probability value between 0 and 2 must be half of 0.9544. Hence, the probability of x taking a value in the range 100, 140 is 0.4772. What is the probability x takes a value in the range 100, 160? We know the probability between minus 3 and 3. It is 0.9974. The probability value between 0 and 3 must be half of 0.9974. Hence, the probability of x taking a value in the range 100, 160 is 0.4987 What is the probability x takes a value in the range 120, 140? We know the probability value between 0 and 2. It is 0.4772 And we know the probability value between 0 and 1. It is 0 0.3413. Hence, the probability x taking a value in the range 120-140 is 0.4772 minus 0 0.3413 equal to 0.1359. What is the probability x takes a value greater than 160? We know the probability value between Z equal to 0 and Z equal to infinity. It is 0.5. We know the probability value between Z equal to 0 and Z equal to 3. It is 0.4987. The probability value between 3 and the infinity must be 0.5 minus 0.4987 and that is equal to 0 0.0013. Hence, the probability of x taking a value 
greater than 160 is 0 0.0013. Always go like this. Find the corresponding z values for the given x values and determine the probability using the area under normal curve table given in the textbooks. Well, why should we standardize the normal curve? Whatever be the mean and standard deviation of a normal distribution, once you standardized it, the area under the curve becomes 1, its mean becomes 0 and its standard deviation becomes 1. We can easily predict the probability of x assuming a value in a given range.